There's really two stories with Mount Diablo. One is the story of the rocks and their origin. We understand those a lot better now. The second story is the structural story, how Mount Diablo got here. And that's the one you can still get a good fist fight among geologists about. And you have to understand what made the rocks isn't what made the mountain. And once you've got that part licked, it's a little bit easier to understand, or at least to accept. The rock up here, we'll see it, it's called Franciscan Rock, the very oldest rock on, it, on Mount Diablo. It got its name for San Francisco, you might imagine. And it really doesn't belong here. Of all the rocks we see, this is the one that's out of place and the one that's really been puzzling. And if you take an, even a basic geology course, the first thing you learn is the oldest layers are on the bottom and the youngest are deposited on top. So Mount Diablo is really contrary, and people have scratched their heads and tried to figure out why that is. Franciscan Rock was first identified by a geologist from the University of California at Berkeley, whose name was Andrew Lawson. Lawson was on the faculty of UC Berkeley for 50 years, finally passing away in 1952 at the near geologic age of 91. His reputation was one of a curmudgeon. One thing he never learned to accept was having women in his classrooms. He started every lecture the same way. Good day, gentlemen. He would never call on the females. He would never acknowledge them. One day, as a prank, all the male students stayed out of class and only the females attended. So Lawson walks out into the lecture hall, up to the podium, spreads his notes out. Then he looks up and for a few moments he's speechless, seeing only women in the classroom. And he gathers up his lecture notes and announces, well, see nobody's here today, lecture's canceled. Probably not something he could get away with at UC Berkeley today. When he's still young, he went over to the Marin Headlands and he mapped a series of rocks. He found a rock that he could recognize as having been erupted from an underwater volcano, a pillow basalt, which we'll see. He found a rock formed from the recrystallized skeletons of microscopic sea creatures that were floating in the ocean while dinosaurs were walking on land. Chert, C-H-E-R-T. And he found a rock called gray wacky sandstone, which forms from underwater landslides. So he could identify all these rocks, but he couldn't interpret them. He could not figure out what they were doing here. It didn't sound like the California he knew. And when I had the kids up here, I said, well, you know, Professor Lawson, his problem was he just didn't live long enough. It, had he hung on for another 20 years, it would have all become clear. He would have been 112. But what didn't he know that you all know now? These are sixth graders and they all scratched their head. Eventually one of them figures it out. Plate tectonics. Everybody by now probably knows the concept that the Earth's crust is divided up into plates. Really exciting stuff happens at the plate boundaries where they come together and we all know that here because we're right on the boundary of one of those plates. We're sitting here on the North American plate and, and to the west of us, just outside the Golden Gate, which we should be able to see, is the Pacific plate. And of course, the main motion on that is it's a transform fault. The Pacific plate to the west of us is actually sliding up towards Alaska, average of two inches a year. We're sitting here on the, the North American plate. Los Angeles and San Diego's on the Pacific plate. Of course, the old joke is if you want to wait long enough, 50, you know, 10 or 20 million years, the Dodgers and the Giants will be in the same town again. They'll be cross town rivals as the Los Angeles go scooting by. Plates can move in lots of different ways. The transform faults slide past each other. But plates can also converge or diverge, move toward or apart from each other. To understand the Franciscan rocks, you have to go back 190 million years to a plate spreading center, a diverging plate boundary 3,000 miles out in the Pacific Ocean. You can imagine the two plates moving away from each other. And as they move away from each other, molten rock wells up from the mantle 
onto the ocean surface and it pushes the plates apart, it creates new ocean crust at those volcanoes. And the rock it forms is called basalt. Imagine the plates moving away from each other. One's gonna head off towards Asia, we won't worry about. The other one, which was called the Farallon Plate, or the Ancestral Pacific Plate, that's moving towards North America about two inches per year from 3,000 miles away, and now it's got something riding on top of it, the pillow basalt. Okay, let's start our walk. Our next stop is at marker number three, where we'll get to see some of those pillows of well-traveled basalt. <laughs> 